Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just I, I I'm well. I guess it's bad because I, <laughs> <laughs> I keep doing it wrong. Oh my god! I need your help in the kitchen. <laughs> I always kind of feel it before I go with the that, cheese. That that makes sense. Sheila. Hello. Oh. Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited. Yes. Take a seat. Enjoy. We're about to start. Oh my God, I smell the food. Good. I'm good. ready to eat. Haven't eaten all day. <laughs> oh my God, it smells so good in here. Yeah. I'm excited. I haven't eaten all day just to prepare for this. <laughs> well, I hope I do you proud. Oh my God. <laughs> if you haven't already figured this out yet. This is a show where I get to cook a dream dinner for one of my amazing guests who comes onto the show, and I interview them about their life thus far. Um, today, I'm excited because we have Sheila here today. Hey. Um, and what's your Instagram? It's at Sheila says with the Z. Perfect. So if you are listening and you haven't seen Sheila before, go onto her Instagram so you can really kind of see who we are dealing with here. But let me explain to you. Um, we worked together at BuzzFeed. She was a producer for As Is, which is like the beauty kind of like lifestyle mm-hmm. part of BuzzFeed. And you also do some like kind of collaborations with Paralike now and mm-hmm. again. Um, and yeah, you just make um, amazing content. And her Instagram game, Model Game, is impressive. <laughs> oh, stop. And um, yeah, you sing, you want to get into music. Mm-hmm. You're an amazing person. And I can't wait to kind of yeah. dive deeper into Sheila. Ooh. Oh my God, I've been thinking about this since you've told me about it, which was like a week ago. I've just been like preparing for this moment. Oh, good. Like when someone texts you and is like, what's your dream dinner? You can't help but get excited. I mean, I'm like, I love pasta and I love wine. Mm-hmm. So I'm an easy date to please. Oh, perfect. <laughs> that's, that's the way I like it. Um, and actually what's interesting, for the first time, we're actually kind of trying to cook things live while this show is happening. Since it's kind of just me producing everything, we haven't done that in the past because that's just too many things for my brain to handle. But, <laughs> but now you're a veteran after the third show, right? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to figure it out a bit. So I think we can handle it. And it's, it's a simpler dinner tonight, so I'm excited. Um, but the first thing I'd like to do before we dive into any kind of segments is just like, if this were like a random like Tinder date for the first okay. time where people like, you know, we've just getting to know each other. Yes. Tell me kind of like in a bridge life story of Sheila. Oh, okay. Yeah. So kind of like the Sparks Notes version of who yeah. I am. From, from birth to here, but quick. Oh, oh wow. That's a lot to cover. <laughs> first, it came out of my mom's uterus. No, I'm just kidding. Growing up, I've always been into like the arts and entertainment. I grew up watching like TRL and loving music videos. I would yeah. always be watching music videos. And um, I just eventually took a leap of faith and came to LA and was like, you know what? I want to do this. I don't have a job. I don't have a house. I'm just going to come with one luggage with a dream in my heart and just dedication and hard work and having the Miley Cyrus song. Uh, what was that song? Uh, Party in the USA? Party in the USA was like playing as I was on the airplane. And I don't know if this Perfect. happens to a lot of people in LA, but like I came in and people were clapping and saying like, welcome to LA. So I felt like that was just a sign of like LA welcoming me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't know if that happens to everyone. Did not happen to me. I think there was like a weird hobo on the side of the road when I first came to LA. That's more accurate yeah, of yeah, what yeah. happens. But um, I don't know. And I just felt like that was like one of the best decisions of my life was just coming here and just being fearless and doing the thing, you know? What year did you move to LA? Um, I moved here right after college, so it was around uh, 2014, yeah. Sweet, yeah, I came right after college too. Yeah. Um, Okay, so the first thing that we do is you are an official guest of Dinner Views now, which means- So legit. Yes, you get to sign the Dinner Views guest book. Oh snap. This is like the equivalent version of like TRL and they used to have like the chalkboard and then pe- like celebrities would sign it. Oh my God, I feel so cool right well, now. Well, there we go. So yeah, <laughs> you can just um, sign it at the bottom and then okay. I'll, write, I'll write your name and stuff later on. Oh my God. And so while you're finishing that up, we are gonna get ready for our first game, our first segment. It's okay. called Fast Food Favorites. Ooh, mm-hmm. I've heard of this one. I saw Salorman Joyce's. I think I have to beat Salorm's score, which yeah. is like 22. Yeah. Good right. luck. That was she was like really rushing <laughs> I through. I know it was like, oh my god, you're too good at this. Um, Isn't it fun to compete yes, while you're having dinner? I'm so competitive, so yes. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get 23. I just know what I got to. Okay, so let me get 
one minute on the clock. Okay, refresh and refresh my memory. Yes. Okay. So how you play fast food favorites mm -hmm. is you just kind of grab little names of food items here. It's so like dairy item, right? And you're going to um, once you pull it up, you're going to say your favorite flavor of that item. Okay. And I'm going to try and make sure it's all accurate as we're going along, but just go as fast as you possibly can in okay. one minute. Okay. And so I don't have to like say send. It's just my favorite. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm trying to strategize how to do this. All right. Got this. I like your uh, <laughs> thinking for this, okay. and then right after, and then when you're done, we'll discuss. Okay, okay? so my favorite ingredient. No, like or it's like your favorite flavor, flavor. of okay. whatever's on the card. Okay, cool. Three, two, one, go. Okay, uh, dairy item cream. Yeah, oh. that works. All right, uh, lettuce water. Water lettuce? Yes. Okay. Uh, grain wheat. Uh, dessert ice cream. Nice. Uh, candy, uh, Snickers. Vegetables, kale. Oh. Uh, rice, oh, wild rice. Perfect. Oh, that's uh, from Minnesota. Com right. Comfort food, um, 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 brownies. Let's see. Last supper, like Jesus? I don't know if that's a flavor. Um, junk food, uh, junk food, ooh, Chick fil A. What else? Bread, um, pita. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh my God, oopsies. I'm getting like nervous. Uh, salad toppings, ooh, I don't, lemon and salt are my favorite. Uh, let's see, snacks, ooh, chip, potato chips. Nice. Uh, bagels, sesame bagels. Nice, oh, that's it. Okay. That was good though. Okay, so let's count them up. Okay. One of them you said Jesus for Last Supper. That one's not gonna count. Let's, let's, let's take that one out. I just think of, I know, it was just the first thing that came to mind. Yeah, it's like catchphrase almost. Um, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Ah, oh, thirteen. <laughs> Dang it. It's all right. It's you all know? right. You know, it's it's harder than you think, it right? It's hard. And it's surprising how fast a minute actually goes, right? I know. It's so crazy. Um. Okay. So I was curious about a few of these. Okay. That I want to talk about. Okay, so you said your favorite vegetable was kale, right? Yes. So I'm excited about that because originally Sheila had talked about how she really likes cucumber in her salads. Mm -hmm. But like, I had an issue with shopping today and I actually forgot to get the cucumber. So I was like, oh no, the dinner is ruined. Uh -huh. um, but what I actually do have that I'm going to replace it with is kale. <gasps> yeah. Like two different types. It's like you know me. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, so that's going to be really good. I'm less sad now, which yeah. is great. The fun fact about me is I have like probably like three different kale shirts oh. that like kale puns and it's not because I like I'm obsessed with kale but I just like it and there's just so many good kale puns yeah you know yeah so um it's also very LA of you to I like know kale. right <laughs> I mean Beyonce has a shirt like a sweater that says kale and ever since then I just became a fan of kale because mm. Beyonce yeah. approves yeah because that's like a like a joke on Yale right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um so and then you said water lettuce yes what do you mean by that just like you know lettuce this is just watery, right? <laughs> it's the one that's fresh. Um, there's butter lettuce, and then there's like there's like hydroponically grown lettuce, which means like it's Probably grown in water. Probably that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's we can, we'll say that works. It's like it's the lettuce that's grown in water. You know, I was under pressure, and yes. water is just what came to mind. That's all right. You know what? We'll count it. Hydroponic <laughs> lettuce. Yes. Okay, so that was fast food favorite. Ooh, that was fast. No. Wait, joke. that was a bad oh, That was high horrible. Five. There we yeah. go. Great job. Okay, let's put that away. The next uh, segment is okay. called What App? Okay. And we're essentially going to enjoy an appetizer while we answer questions from social media apps. Oh, heck yes. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Two of my favorite things, appetizers and apps. Perfect. Ooh, what's this? So this is our Ooh. app. These are dates that are stuffed with goat cheese, mm -hmm. chives, and pecans. Oh, hell And some yeah. lemon juice and salt. And then it's wrapped in prosciutto. Ooh, okay. Boy. <laughs> so here, let's each try some. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Do we do a little cheers? Let's do it. Cheers. Yes. Mmm. It's salty and sweet. Two of my favorites. Creamy. Mm-hmm. A little bit of crunch from the I like nut. the little bit of lemon. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a citrus kind of gal. Good. Mmm. So good. Tasty, right? Mm-hmm. So we can enjoy these and I'm gonna pull up some questions to ask you from the interwebs. So the first one is uh, from Instagram, mm, okay. and this is actually from Salorm. Oh, hey Salorm! 
who was on here last week, and um, her question is, uh, Sheila, what made you stop straightening your hair? Mmm, that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna chew this so I don't give you those weird sounds as I'm talking. Um, so what made me stop straightening my hair? Yeah. You know what? I did a video actually at BuzzFeed where I decided to wear my hair natural mm. and that was kind of like the first push of like just really embracing my natural hair and it was something that I was so insecure about yeah. and I was just tired of damaging my hair and tired of just not being free with it mm. and so I just through that video it really helped push me to like learn how to take care of my hair learn how to like you know just let it be free and knowing what products to use and it just really honestly was one of my favorite videos at BuzzFeed because I just was like the most vulnerable mm. and I didn't think anyone else would care about hair but yeah. um, it's one of I think the videos that people most know me for nice yeah and when was like the last time you straightened your hair then like how long has it been oh it's been okay the last time I straightened my hair has been almost a year wow. so I've been like doing real good yeah. and I feel like I don't know if you can tell like there's like stages of my hair through my Instagram you can see like when I just recently stopped straightening my hair to now and oh, it's just yeah. improved so much yeah. so I'm glad that I'm actually like taking the right steps to making my hair healthy I always find like most people like when they're in their most natural state and they look the best and like oh. obviously you're beautiful and yeah. on Instagram I'm always like <laughs> like the photos are so beautiful and I think like it's yeah. and this like you choosing to like just wear your hair natural mm -hmm. like it really lends itself well to like you know posing for photos and stuff yeah. and like, that's really great oh thank you yeah. yeah it was definitely something I was insecure about because growing up I'd see movies like you know Princess Diaries yeah. and how like the makeover would be like her straightening her hair and like in the 90s and oh, the 2000s wow. it was all about straight hair and like highlights and mm. I didn't have that kind of hair and I just didn't know what to do with my hair to make it look that way yeah. and I just felt like that was the image I needed to portray but now I'm like fuck it this is my hair yeah. I'm gonna have frizz if it needs yeah. to have frizz Good. you know so I know I've grown a lot yeah and it's so interesting because like obviously like I've um you know, when you watch a lot of like media or movies or TV shows mm -hmm. growing up, like I think we both did. Yeah. Like there's a lot of things that are told to you subconsciously. And I thought there was a lot just for me as like a young gay kid, but yeah. I, it's like, it's like so much more for women. And like yeah. you mentioning that, cause I used to love that movie. I never mm -hmm. even would have like fathomed that was yeah. like a dangerous thing that could have like been put mm -hmm. to you. And it was, yeah. that's so interesting. And I didn't like, and it's such a, like I love that movie, yeah. but it's crazy that you just don't realize yeah. the images you constantly see yeah. do play a huge role in how your how your thinking is now. Yeah, and of yourself. Yeah, yes, that's crazy. Yes. Like for wow. you, like, you know, did were you always confident in like saying like, oh, I am like this Get, way? Mm -mm, yeah. Never. <laughs> I'm like still working on it. I yeah. I feel like um well, okay, so for me I was like a kind of like a fat kid, right? Chubby kid and um I definitely I didn't come out until I was eighteen. Mm -hmm. Um and then I was always just kinda of like awkward. I haven't yeah. really kind of come into my own probably until this like probably these last few years. Yeah. Um but yeah, just like there was really no one like me. The same, mm -hmm. I'm assuming for you, you would feel that way. And um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I always just felt like I had to like put on a facade to like yeah. either pretend I wasn't gay or like, I don't know, I just, I, I didn't, um, I used food as a crutch versus like mm -hmm. as my weapon. Now yeah. it's like, now I, it's like my <laughs> thing. Yeah. Versus before it was like my way to like, you know. Hide and, yeah, yeah. And, like, and like I would, you know, eat a lot because I was like lonely or bored or whatever. And, and mm -hmm. now it like, I had much, a much healthier relationship with food and That's I, good. you know, own it. Yeah. yeah. And it just like, but a lot of that had to do with like what I was watching, you know, yeah. so it's really interesting. Yeah. Hey, media. I'm glad we're in media now because I feel yeah. like it's more about embracing who you are, which yeah. I think is really important that we're leaning more towards that direction. And then we're the people that are going to be creating it for the future, yes. which is I what's know, so good. I love good. that. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Okay. Um, so now we're going to go to Facebook. Okay. All right. And this person asks, um, uh, and this is Greg, by the way. Love Greg. Um, what is your favorite show on Netflix? Oh, oh my God. I've been on this like Netflix binge, yeah. you know? Um, favorite show, it's so hard to, to say, mm -hmm. but the one that I currently love is um, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. <gasps> yeah. I love that show. It's so good. And I think they're up for season two, which yeah. I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. Um, the warlock in there, uh, God, Gavin, whatever his name is. Yeah. I follow him on Instagram. I love him. Mm. His inspirational quotes. Um, but yeah, it's just such a good show and um, well produced. And it's from the producers of Riverdale. Yeah. So 
You know, they're doing something right. Is it scary for you it's, or not? Honestly, I am such a scaredy cat. I yeah. hate horror. Yeah. I freaking watched Chucky when I was little and I just like hated it so much that I've like kind of been afraid of watch scary stuff. Yeah. But um, this one's kind of like a good balance between like, you know, a little little fun, but a little bit of like, yeah. like horror, which I like. I'm also a scaredy cat. Mm -hmm. I hate everything that will like be scary. Yes. Um, but I loved Sabrina, the TV show, like the um, with um, Melissa Joan Hart as mm -hmm. a kid. So good. Uh, and uh, I have like a, a really great friend in England, mm -hmm. and he loves horror. Yes. And so he was like, "Let's watch it together." And I'm like, "I don't want to," but he like forced me to, and uh -huh. then I was glad because. It was scary, and there was times I was like, "Oh, sh this is not yeah. for me. Yeah. I am not it's watching good to this." Watch it with someone. Yeah, right. uh, but then, um, but once you get past it and you realize it's like just part of the story, yeah. it was really interesting yeah. and a really great show. So great choice. Yes, and it's actually like darker than the old school Sabrina, oh, way, which I didn't way expect. Way darker. Way darker. Yeah, because yeah. watching it, watching it on the previews, I was like, "Oh, it's like a little innocent kind of show," and then I was like, "Damn, it goes there." It's like satanic. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah. a lot of Satan references. <laughs> Um, awesome. Okay. And now that's, now we're going to go to Twitter. Okay. So this is from Ray now. Uh-huh. What is um, your guilty pleasure food? Ooh, my guilty pleasure. Yeah. I really love, love, love chips. Okay. Like, what flavor? I could anything. Oh, wow. Like hot Cheetos, mm. like potato chips. Like I, chips are like... Like, I eat it all the time that I think that my stomach now is like, please do not feed me more chips because I might throw up. Like, wow. yeah. Is I, it the texture, like the crunch? I think I like the crunch. Yeah. And I love salty things. Yeah. Like, like sweets are cool and all, but the salty things have my heart. Yeah, like, yeah. I will eat anything that's salty. I'm and the crunchy. exact same way. Crunchy and salty. Perfect. What's your favorite? Guilty pleasure food? Yes. Um... Honestly, just like a big vat of like chili or like Ooh. like pizza, like 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 homemade pizza, yes. um, or anything like really like meaty. I like yeah. meaty things, yeah, mm. like ribs mm. or stuff like that. Oh my god, yeah. have you been in Texas? Um, only for like a week for this like Walmart thing we did with Tasty. Boy, but, you need to go for. Uh, let me. You come with me to okay. Texas. I'll okay. take you to Austin. We need to go to Franklin's because that Franklin's. has some good barbecue, okay. some good meat, and you'll love it there. Sounds good. <laughs> oh, I forgot to pour you some wine. Oh, yes. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> I actually kind of am leaning into the weird food ASMR sounds. Uh-huh. And seeing, like, no one's said anything bad or good yet, so we'll, we'll see <laughs> what people think. But, um, what's here? I'm... I, well. I am in too. Like, I'm into it too. Like, I just didn't get the hype, and now I'm like, wow, that's kind of actually soothing. Okay, I might do, let's do one more. This is from YouTube. Okay. All right. And the question is, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, where do I see myself five years from now? Honestly, I would love to have my own company. I want to be a badass boss bitch. Mm -hmm. I want to, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. own my own company. Um, do stuff that is inspiring for people. I want to be creating. So um, wh whether it's like a production company or like having like my own music video company or right. do music, some something where I could just like own my shit yeah. and I could just create to inspire people yeah. is my goal. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. I feel like we're similar in that regard. Like mm -hmm. I want to have my own company and obviously like the kind of avenue is a bit different. Yeah. Obviously food for me. Yeah. But yeah, I just... Um, that's why I know, like, we came, we became quick friends. We did. Like, we met kind of, like, later in the game, mm -hmm. but we, like, kind of instantly clicked because we both have the same kind of, like, um, values, I think, and I we think have so. the same ambitions. And I think sense. so, yeah. and I feel like you have, like, similar work ethic, too. Yes, like, definitely. you're like, I need to get shit done. Like, you, you're, like, serious about, yeah. like, I feel like when you say something, you do it and yeah. you deliver, and I'm just like, I love it. I love having people that hype you up. Yeah. And so, like, that take you to the next level. Like, I need people in my friend group to like boost me because like I want us to like grow from each other and learn from each other and I feel totally. like you're one of those people that I want to like keep on my top four on my space you know <laughs> well yeah see top four yeah I was gonna uh -huh. say because like um there's like, like a saying that's like gone around where like you are the collection of like the five people you hang around yeah, with most totally and like if you hang around with negative people they drag you oh, down oh yeah I can't deal with negative yeah. people no. I'm like you're not in my circle bye yes. Felicia yes. <laughs> boost me up I'll boost you up yes yeah, I yeah. love it 
um, amazing. So that was mm -hmm. what app. Yay! I like that one. Right? Yeah, that was that fun, right? That was cute. I like clever names. So yeah. appetizer, social media oh apps. God. Oh my god, we, I feel like we're so similar in that sense too because I love like puns. <laughs> Anytime I can insert a pun, mm -hmm. I will. Mm -hmm. So, oh my god, this is so cool. And so now that we've mm -hmm. kind of had some appetizers, had some wine, answered your questions, mm -hmm. the next segment is Dream Dish. Ooh. So what's going to happen is I'm going to start heating up the actual dinner okay. and get it ready for you. And while I'm plating your dream dish, mm -hmm. you're gonna give me some dish Ooh. about a secret you've never told anyone before. Oh. So we have an exclusive for our time together. Okay, right? okay, let me let me think. Yeah, take your time, okay. I'm gonna get things ready. So like a secret I haven't told yeah. anyone. Okay. Yeah, and it, you know, it doesn't have to be dark, it can be like mm -hmm. a funny secret, but just like Yeah, I'm something like, how that... dark do you wanna go? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we'll save the serious moments for the actual like, after we're done and we're eating. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, just like, you know, something funny, something silly that you haven't told anyone before. Let's see. So right, I have some pasta here, mm -hmm. and this is a puttanesca sauce, which I will show mm -hmm. in like some close-ups. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna drop the pasta into the sauce. smells amazing like yeah. I wish the audience could smell what I'm smelling because it smells like I just died and went to heaven it's so good <laughs> it's like oh my god how are you still single I don't understand you know this. what <laughs> it's really complicated <laughs> Salorn was saying the same thing she was trying to ask me out during the interview as she's because she's been trying to ask me out since like we started at BuzzFeed but uh -huh. um uh, I feel like she's probably not the only one. Oh, that's I feel sweet. like there's like a line of people. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so I'm gonna okay. sprinkle some cheese over some stuff. Oh, so Have you cheese. thought of any okay. secret yet? So, okay, a secret. It's yeah. not really a secret, but you know, it's um, something that a lot of people don't know about me Great. is that um, I, my grandma. Okay, so my middle name. Is mm -hmm. actually named after my grandma, okay. and um, which is what? What's your middle name? It's Olinda, so it's like my it's Sheila Olinda Farahani, and uh, I was named after my grandma, and I just love her so much. She's mm -hmm. like one of the biggest like influences in my life, and like such a pure soul. So I feel very like honored to be named after her. But uh -huh. it's like uh, something that many people don't know is that I'm named after my grandma. Wow. Yeah. Um. Wait, so is, is she still with us? Did no, you still, oh. she's not with us anymore, but she's like definitely always in my heart and like I, she loved cooking as <gasps> well. She oh yeah, she's like, the one who said you have she, to cook. Yeah, okay. she loved cooking and everything she made was amazing. Um, I wanted to do a video where like I like go through her recipes and just try to do it for like a week or a month and That'd just try awesome. to just do that and like give it to my family because like my family knows I'm not a good cook yeah. they know that I like struggle in the kitchen but um, I think it'd be really special to do something like that but um, my grandma made like the best Peruvian dishes and oh. stuff I actually made one for tasty which I like oh with yeah yeah with Rie, right Rie, I was able to make that happen but um, but yeah, yeah it's know. a whole other ball game with tasty isn't it because like you kind of like Rie kind of does everything right yeah, yeah she yeah. was like I got the stuff ready and yeah. I was like okay great yeah it, like because there, there, I, obviously I produce videos but there were a few times where um I would just be talent and it's like it's interesting where like you literally are like a hand model really yeah she was like this is how you do it yeah. like ooh. okay so yeah this God. is wait um let me get some cheese for you Oh, hell yeah. Oh my God. This is like my favorite part when I go to Italian restaurants is like them being like, how much cheese do you want? And I'm just like, keep going, keep going. <laughs> They're um, like, are you sure you want this much cheese? I'm like, yes, I love cheese. Okay. So the pasta yes. is called puttanesca. Okay. And it's an Italian type of sauce that uh -huh. is kind of starts off as like a marinara tomato red yeah. sauce. And you add um, like some heat. So it's a little bit spicy. Ooh. Ooh. And you like spice? Yes. You know, I'm really like a judge of what people like to eat. <laughs> and then it's also sort of like um, briny and acidic okay. because it has olives and has capers in it. Okay, okay. And then this is the salad that has a lemon olive oil dressing. That is like my favorite. I love lemon. Anything with lemon is like, has my heart. <laughs> Perfect. And then um, this is a salad with kale, okay. arugula, and lacinato kale, which is like the darker green. Uh -huh. And there's tomato, some pecans, and some Parmesan cheese. Oh, heck yes. You're... Kaling it. Kaling it over here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, perfect. Kale, you keep up? 
No, I can't. <laughs> I, I kill. No, I'm not even going to try. Um, okay, so here's the oh salad. God. He's even serving it. Man, okay. you, it, this feels like, okay, I know it's like dinner views and we're uh-huh. like at your place yeah. and it's intimate, but it feels like a like five-star experience. <gasps> like, not even kidding you. This is like so dope. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, I've never, I've been on dates before and it's never been like this, this nice and fancy and so thought out. <laughs> You know? Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I try. I try. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, we concluded mm-hmm. Dream Dish, right? We, yes. I, I plated your food for you. You Hell told yeah. me a secret. And now we can enjoy food for a little bit before we kind of get into the actual dinner. Yes. Movie. Here is okay. some silverware. Cool. Oh. Love it. I'm so excited to delve in. I'm starving. Yes. Let's try everything. And if you need more cheese, let me know. Oh, yeah. I probably will ask for more. Um, this feels like ASMR though. Like <laughs> we should have done a mukbang or mukbang. I'll put that as a th- <laughs> as a tag or something. <laughs> All right, here it here it goes. Mom- moment of truth. <laughs> yes. Good. Yes, yes, sir. Oh, <laughs> I was doing it the wrong way. <laughs> this is evidence I don't really cook much. And then mm. Sheila told me her favorite pasta is as thin as you can possibly go. So mm-hmm. Angel here is what we chose. Yes, I like love thin pasta. Mm. I think, I think it's just because it's um, I don't know what it is about thin pasta. I just really like it. Have you like? Is it that you like dislike thicker pasta, or you just prefer this? Mm. Their curry pasta is okay, but I just like, yeah, the thin one just has my heart. Um, I think the thicker one just, I don't feel the flavor as much or like there's something about like Mm. the thinner it is, the more like, the more I feel like the flavor in my mouth. I don't know if that's like. the sauce? Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know what it is. There might be some psychology to it, but. (laughs) Well, the thinner the noodle is Mm -hmm. means like kind of the more surface area that's touching the sauce, so, which means like you're gonna have more sauce per bite. That's probably why I like yeah, it. Yeah, that would make yeah. sense. Maybe um, it's funny if like if you do a thing where you like you like analyze like people's dream dish and you're like, okay, this is what it tells you about like yourself. You know, oh, like a yeah. horoscope or something mm. would do. It'd be like, oh, you like pasta? Well, this means that you're like, you like this or something. You know? Mm. Yeah. So wait. So if we were to, if I was kind of like, you know, come to your kitchen and help you kind of. Um, cook some more meals like what would you want to learn or what would you n- want to like gain in the kitchen yeah I mean I just want to be able to like cook quick meals but make them taste really good because yeah. I'm always a person on the go I'm like always trying to be busy and I feel like I just need the patience to just cook like a a quick meal that's like has flavor mm-hmm. that has a little bit of spice then that I could just like Eat on the go. Mm. So something that's quick and easy, but I could just like impress my friends with, you know? Nice. Okay. In my mind, that would mean, uh, like, I always, I'm an advocate of meal prep. Mm-hmm. I, my like kind of like usual one-two punch is to meal prep simple, quick things that I'm going to enjoy that are healthy throughout mm-hmm. the week. And then I try and do one special dinner for myself yeah. on the weekend. Ooh, I like that. That way you're not always bored, yeah. but you're not, like, wasting a lot of money. Right. Um, so that's, what, like, like you know, one kind of fancy one, or then the rest all mm-hmm. simple. And then um, my biggest thing is just, like, make sure you have um, salt and acid. So, like, okay. So, like, like, vinegars or, like, lemon and, right. and, and like, salt. Okay. The seasoning is really important. And then, um, like, whenever you're, like, cooking meats or, yeah. like, um, things in the pan, like, usually like, you want to go darker. Like, gotcha. if you go darker, it's going to have a lot more flavor. Okay. Versus okay. if you just, like, go too quick and it's, like, gotcha. crunchy still. Gotcha. Um, usually that's, like, some good, good like, easy tips. tips. Yeah. That's actually, yeah. And, like, no one's ever told me that before. So that's, like, mm-hmm. good to know. Especially, like, when you're meal prepping and you're trying to, like, be healthy and all that. It's, like, how can you, like, make this enjoyable yeah. besides just eating chicken all the time? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'll help you out. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, we should definitely collab yeah. on a vid, on a cooking vid. Um, okay, so now while we're eating, we kind of mm-hmm. go into what is the actual dinner view okay. section of the podcast. And I just like want to know more about you, and like, mm. you know, and like know 
like I'm like really curious of your journey and what you are hoping for in the future, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So first, let's talk about your biggest passion, music. Yes. Okay. So why do you love it so much? What got you in music to start off? Yeah. You know what? I just so growing up, I used to be a very like anxious kid. Okay. I used to be really um, like I'd go to bed at night and I would just feel very. I don't know, I just get scared of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I feel like music was the one thing that made me really like calm and like listening to like church music and like just being around music and the sounds or something that was unexplainable about it that just made me feel better. And I ever since then I've been obsessed with like music videos, like watching TRL was like one of the highlights of like me being a teenager was like tuning in for that every week. You know, when, back in the day when you'd actually have to tune into a certain yeah. time and like watch something, Crazy. I would dedicate like my time to TRL. And I just love the way that music is like a sound that like you don't have to say anything. It's just like that sound just really like resonates with you and yeah. it's just like explains everything that you're feeling, yeah. you know? And I just, I just love it. There's, a, there's like, I just love music videos, music, it's all like in my heart. Well, what I really find fascinating about music is um, a lot of skills or mm -hmm. talents, you, it takes a long time to prove you have that to someone, mm -hmm. right? So let's say if I want to cook someone a meal, mm -hmm. like I could show them a photo, but yeah. like it would probably take, a, like, take me a long time to, you know, cook the meal for them and it would like take a long time to like impress them. Yeah. But like, if you're a singer, right? Mm -hmm. let's, let's say like Ariana Grande, for example, mm -hmm. or Sheila, for example. <laughs> just if you just like belt out a note, mm -hmm. people can instantly around yeah. the world, yeah. no matter what language, or they can, like know you have talent. Mm -hmm. And that's like a, it's like that's why it's so marketable. That's why it's the biggest industry in the world because like yeah. it's just like it's such an easy way to showcase talent. Right. That's so true. You know, and and like and, and then, it's so universal. It's you know, universal. like you don't have to know how to speak the language to like understand music, which yeah. I love. Like a good example is like K-pop. Mm -hmm. Like um, it's huge even here in America. Don't get me all... started on K-pop. Wait, who are your favorite people? Oh my god! Well, BTS is like what I fell in love with mm -hmm. at first with K-pop, but I love like Blackpink, <laughs> and I just love like the girl groups are like they know mm. how to the K-pop. I'm just gonna get in a tangent. You can zoom in no, on this. No, let's do it. Yeah. I'm like, I, the reason why I love K-pop is that they are stars. Like, they are the definition of what a pop star group is. Yeah. They like know different languages. They dance. Their music videos are like movies yeah. out of this world. And they just are so good at like, just reaching so many different audiences yeah. with their music. Yeah. I just, I'm obsessed. I am. Um, well, because I think it's interesting because it's because they're like orchestrated that way, right? Yeah. And so my favorite group, bar none, is Blackpink. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, every other K-pop boy or girl group, they're all yeah. cool. But to me, like, I've literally seen probably every interview with Blackpink. <laughs> I've like watched like their like reality show. Oh I, yeah, I, they I, had I, just, a like, show. I don't know why I'm mm -hmm. so obsessed with them. Mm -hmm. I just am. Yeah. And yeah, they're a great example of like they were like carefully orchestrated. Like you know, two of them speak English, so yeah. now they're finally kind of coming into America mm -hmm. now. And they were just yeah. like on Good Morning America. Yeah. And like um. It's crazy that they're just now coming to America. I know. I, was, like, I think because they've had fans here since the beginning, yeah. but like I think um. Just like K-pop is just being like yeah. hitting the mainstream. Yeah. But, like you could tell they were playing it from the get-go by getting Rose and getting Jenny. Yeah. It's crazy <gasps> though, because it's so big like internationally, yeah. and then America, I feel like, is so late to the game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they just really I, you can tell that there's so much hard work into like their groups, yeah. and it's not easy like being around like five other people like I can't imagine being in a group with five other people for like years yeah. um so they really like I just see the effort in like these groups yeah. and I just it just doesn't go unnoticed yeah because they like because they're they audition when they're like teenagers yeah. and like so Blackpink they've been together for like eight years almost right and they work together every day they live together they live in the same like yeah. dorms it's like crazy um and I know it's very controversial like the whole like industry yeah um which is unfortunate like i don't know what's true about it right. but um th they do put good work out and yeah. that's one thing that i know is true is that they do give good good performances too that's also why i tell people i think how i first got obsessed with them is i think i related with them because they're like <laughs> us in a lot of ways yeah. that like they really care about what they do yeah but like their work environment is kind of uh you know questionable yeah, and yeah. overworked mm -hmm. and you can tell they're being kind of taken advantage of yeah but they also really care yeah and like 
Yeah, so that's, I was just, I'm like, we are kindred spirits, <laughs> girls. You know, I really related to that. And, yeah. Um, but no matter what, no matter how hard they are worked or whatever, you can just like tell yeah. they care. And I, I love yeah. that. And I think that you have to have a level of care to do that, mm -hmm. to even be in that industry, to even get to that level. Mm -hmm. You have to have some sort of passion. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm all for passion and good music. So, K-pop, keep it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so... Um, what, how did you go from loving music, um, and then how did you transition from that to kind of going to video? Mm -hmm. And how did you get into, how did you become a rock star, video producer, and editor, oh, and talent, and director, mm -hmm. everything? What, yeah. How did you get to that? Um, I mean, so I actually like auditioned for like music school back at like UT, and shout out Longhorns, um, and I didn't get, like I didn't get in. And so I was like, oh shoot, like I really mm -hmm. want to do music, but what's another avenue that I can kind of like do music, but also test my creativity? Cause I always like made videos growing up. Mm. I would make little funny videos, sketches with my sister. Like I even made this like Donkey Kong rap that I would like, perform to my family um, on like birthdays and stuff. Wow. I was like always creating stuff. So I was like, you know what? Like making shit fills my soul. So why don't I do the radio, television and film program, which I did. And that's when I actually learned how to like film and produce yeah. and like direct and like my short film won like best award of the class. So like, oh. you, I feel like you know that you're doing something right when you're like getting those signs in life. Definitely. And um, I don't know if I read the book, The Alchemist, and okay. it's all about like following your passion and like listening to the omens and listening to the signs. And I took that as a sign that, and I also like the first thing that I produced ended up going to a film festival. So I was like, okay, I didn't know how to do this before, but it's weird that like, I'm getting all these like successes out of it. Yeah. I must, you know, I think this might be like a career path that I could take, yeah. but also like incorporate music into doing that. And yeah. I think that's why I love like music videos because yeah. it combines both of my passions of like music and video. Yeah. Um, and I just, I just really love, I, I just love like doing that, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's great because that reminds me again like a mm -hmm. lot about me because mm -hmm. you know obviously I grew up in kitchens and I, my original tra trajectory was to go into restaurants, mm -hmm. hopefully one day own a restaurant and then I also just kind of found the video because I love to watch YouTube and yeah. I was like why not I'll try doing it yeah. and then I found a, a separate passion like it's a, a different than food, mm -hmm. it's like I'm sure it's a little different than music yeah. but like they go together so well yeah. and now it's just like I'm, I have a perfect job where I'm able to kind of do both. Do both, and, yeah. um, in the end, I'm, I'm so glad that, you know, you said it's, like, part of, like, your journey and, like, you know, with part of, like, the yeah. omens and stuff yeah. because, like, now you have skills that a lot of other, like, normal singers don't have, right? You're able to, like, true. market yourself better. Yeah. And all those skills are so useful to kind of getting you to, like, another step in life totally. and, like, higher level. And then you're able to also, like, just if someone can't help you, you can yeah. do it yourself. Totally. No. Yeah. And I think that's the cool thing about life yeah. is that where you think you're going to go they might take you a different direction and you don't realize that that's what you needed. Yeah. Like, I love that song quote. It's like, you don't always get what you want, but you get what you need. And mm. that's so true. Yeah. So like, even with you, with your like cooking and your yeah. filmmaking, like yeah. you f with being a filmmaker and a video producer has helped you become even a better chef. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. so I love that. Yeah. Um, so, so far in your journey, like, do you have any roadblocks that have happened to mm. you that really like tested you really kind of pushed you to your limit like what were what were any of those stories you can tell me well you know what with roadblocks i feel like i try to live life with a positive mindset Love and that. um for me i've always had like internal roadblocks like like mm. telling myself that i'm not good enough telling myself or comparing myself i feel like those have been the hardest roadblocks for me because you can do anything you want but i feel like when you don't believe in yourself like how are you going to convince other people yeah, to believe yeah, in you? Yeah, totally. They're like, why even bother? Yeah. yeah. So I think for the longest time, even like, I still struggle with it. I still feel like it takes me a while to just really like believe that I can do something. Yeah. I feel like I do need validation from people. I do mm. need people to be like, you can do it. But like, if it do, if you can't believe in yourself, like how are you going to like convince other people? And I think that it's a, it's a roadblock that I think that I am trying to overcome and I'm yeah. trying to put myself in like uncomfortable situations and like seek discomfort. Yeah. 
Um, and I think that's kind of been the best thing that I could have done. Even yeah. like with making my curly hair video, it was yeah. something that was uncomfortable for me, but I like did it. And out of that came like a lot of other people that related to it. So. Definitely. Like, I, I'm a big proponent of, like, you just have to do it. Like, mm -hmm. even if you're un uncomfortable, right? And, like, yeah. obviously you're trying to test that out. But, like, you know, as an example, like, this show probably wouldn't have happened if I was, like, because I think I'm kind of a perfectionist and yes. I want everything to, like, go perfect. Oh, but, like, yes. it, it holds you back, right? I'm yes. sure the same way. Like, because you're, like, oh, I don't have the perfect camera. I don't have the perfect, like, person, like, yeah. to help me out. Like, mm -hmm. and it's hard to just, like, realize, you know what, the first few things I do are going to be kind of shitty. Yeah. I have to just, like, make it and get it over with. Yeah. But, um... Uh, but yeah, like I think that's like I, I know you're working mm -hmm. on some stuff. And I'm excited yeah. to like see because like the first mm -hmm. ones are always duds. But yeah. then once you kind of like, get through it, yeah, then it really yeah. starts to shine. No, and I think I really admire that you're like I'm just gonna put this out there yeah. because I feel like even with me with music, like I've always wanted to release something. It's always been a fear that it's never good enough, and right. I think that it's taking me like my entire life to release something because I feel like I'm not ready. Uh -huh. And I think that once you get rid of that voice inside your head that's like, it's not ready, or the perfectionist in your mind, yeah. and you do it, like, you're gonna see that like everyone started from something. Yeah. And like Beyonce writes like a hundred songs before she gets that like hit. Yeah. And I think that's why I really like shows like this mm -hmm. or like even interviews. I grew up listening to like interviews from artists yeah. because they've always inspired me because I would always hear more about who they were. Yes. And I was like, oh, wow, I can relate to you because I don't relate to the like pop star Beyonce because I'll never be yeah. the pop star Beyonce. But yeah. I relate to Beyonce when she was like running on the treadmill, like working on her vocal exercises yes. and trying to get it perfect. Like. Yeah. I relate to that kind of person and I think that that's why I think interviews are so important because mm -hmm. it gets to like the rawness of like someone yeah. you know and so. as like both like video mm -hmm. producers filmmakers yeah. like, we love a story yeah and that, like, interviews are like the story of a human being yeah like how they got from A to A to Z right, right. and yeah I'm the same way yeah. I always love them and yeah I think they're so fascinating yeah um, also what's interesting too is like once you kind of get going like once you put yourself out there it's hard in the beginning but then you people start to help you out mm -hmm. once they see you're trying, right? Yeah. Like, it, it, when you're, like, because, um, I cause I think, like, I've talked about this for such a long time, like, two years, ever since I started that BuzzFeed, I was like, I want to do something like this. Yeah. But, like, since I was just talking about it, not doing it, everyone yeah. was like, meh, like, well, you know, no one was, like, really into it. But, like, once you just, like, do it, now people want to be a like, part of it, and yeah, I'm getting, yeah. like, requests. And it's the same thing. It's like, yeah. just people, once you, like, start to push the car mm -hmm. up the hill, uh -huh. I, I think someone said that, like, I think it was... Will Smith or someone uh -huh. in a comedy act like so like if you once you push the car yourself people come and help you but if you're just, like at the side of the road like screaming to help yeah. no one comes and helps that's so true because yeah. I think that's so good like yeah. I that's so true like you people, know people once once you put in the effort people are like oh they're serious about it yeah yeah let me help you out yeah because I know it's like when you talk about it like it's just all talk and no show like I think mm. it's kind of that situation mm -hmm. but no like for you in this show like why did it, why do you think it took you so long to start this? Well, so obviously, okay, so I live in a tiny little dinky apartment here in Hollywood. <laughs> my bed is like pushed up against my window right now behind <laughs> us. And I didn't have the right cameras and I just like didn't know if I could even do it in my apartment or where I could do it. And, right. and we were under contract with BuzzFeed so we yeah. couldn't really compete or do other kind of stuff outside. Mm -hmm. And so I just like, I didn't know if I could do it myself, but then right after the layoffs yeah. i was literally just like i'm gonna buy stuff i i, I know it's gonna be a, a huge chunk of change an investment yeah i'm probably wasting the money but it's an investment <laughs> i can like write it off my taxes later on right and it's like you know i'm not gonna be able to create what i want until i do that right so that's what i did um i'm in the hole a little bit but like it, you know i'm hoping mm -hmm. it all pays off eventually mm -hmm. um uh, but yeah and and also, like, even if it fails, like, one thing, at least you know. Like, mm -hmm. there's not, like, weighing on your brain. Mm -hmm. Like, it could have been great. Right. If you, like, you do it and you're like, oh, it's not as great as I thought or it's a lot of work and it's not worth it. Right. Then you move on. But then you, like, at least you know. Yeah. Um, well, fascinating. Yeah. Um, and I think platforms like YouTube, too, like, for, um, like, you to even put this out there, like, I think before there wasn't this, you know? Right. There wasn't this internet presence. So, like, at least, like, you have a platform you can put this in people are gonna watch. Right. So it's like exciting to live in this time where you yeah. could just like make stuff and people will see it, yeah. you know? That's why I've always loved YouTube because like there's no gatekeeper. Yes. Like if you are a ta if you are great and you put great stuff out there, yeah. the world will notice. Yes, you know? and persistence for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. 
Um, okay, so um, we talked about like you know the whole five years from now, but like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's you know it's all part of the natural dinner yeah. eating process. <laughs> um, so like, what are some subjects, whether it be politics or news, or what are like some maybe activist stuff? Okay. But, like, what are you jazzed about? What are you, what's really important to you? What do you like fight for? Mm. What do you care about? Um, Let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I care about a lot of things, but something that. Um, important to me is just like being able to like let people try to be confident in who they are Mm. because that's something that I struggle with and I like I'm really passionate about like the youth finding like themselves and like not letting like bullies or outside voices get in the way of like them doing what they want to do like Mm -hmm. I really care about like the young kids because that's really like our future and Mm. and like even like growing up as like Latina and Persian like it was just so you know, I, I had a different home than a lot of people, mm-hmm. like, growing up. Mm-hmm. And so, like, my lunches were different. And, you know, like, I had different, like, cultures and stuff. So I think it was just really cool to, like, see how we now live in a society that's a little bit more accepting of, like, diversity. Yeah. And I love that. I yeah. love seeing that. Yeah. So, yeah. I am... Um, I want to keep talking about uh-huh. this, but I'm yeah. also really curious of what your lunch was. Like, what did you bring to school that um, was so different? Oh, my God. So... My mom, my grandma would always make my food, and she was an amazing cook. But sometimes it was just very different from the rest of my friends yeah. because they would have like their like sandwiches that were like turkey, yeah. cheese, like Wonder Bread. Yeah. And then I would come and I would be kind of a little embarrassed because my grandma would have like a three course meal with like her uh, with the Peruvian dishes that she'd make. Um, so it'd be like chicha morada, which was like a drink that I'd mm. have. And then it'd be like arroz con pollo. And it was kind of like a meal meal, not like not just a silly little sandwich, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, and so I would bring it and then it would just like have the smell because it was like so like it's seasoned yeah, yeah, yeah. really like yeah. intensely. Yeah. So I would just be so embarrassed. So I would just be like, okay, never mind. I'm not going to pack my lunch anymore. I'm just going to buy my lunch from school. But honestly, looking back at it, I was like, oh, it's like kind of a missed opportunity to kind of share a little bit of my my mom's culture. I can't even remember what I made. My family was, or my, my parents made those mm-hmm. type of like sandwiches that like weren't special. Uh-huh. So like, I don't even remember what, like, what it tasted like. I have no memories of it, but like, at least even though it was kind of painful, mm-hmm. like usually you have like a story. Mm-hmm. And that's so cool. Like I have an example, like my friend Yejin, um, she's Korean and we went to culinary school together. Mm-hmm. And she always, her mom packed her like um, a lot of lunches with like Korean dishes and with kimchi and was like yeah. so kind of stinky, right? Mm-hmm. And she like, we had like a writing class and she like wrote a little like story about it. And um, um, yeah, same thing. Like she was ashamed and like yeah. she felt like she had to throw it away. Yeah. Um, and like kids were kind of scared and to people, talk about it. And people would like yeah. smell the lunch and be like, what is that? Yeah. Like, kids are, have no filter growing up. Yeah. And they, like, it can really get to you as you, when you're young. And yeah. you're like, damn, like, yeah. maybe I shouldn't bring this anymore. Oh. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I'm like, I'm like, I love Peruvian food. So mm. it's, um, and Persian food. I have, like, two different cultures of food that are amazing. Like, yeah. I've never had an absence of, like, food, good food in the house. Yeah. So. Um. Okay, so we're going, mm-hmm. sorry for the sidetrack mm-hmm. about oh, yeah. the food, but mm-hmm. I just love those little, like, stories. I, you know what's interesting is a lot of people's food preferences of what mm-hmm. they like all ties back to, like, childhood mm-hmm. and a lot of, like, childhood memories. Yeah. So I'm always, like, whenever someone brings up, like, some kind of, like, food thing from their past, I'm like, oh, tell me. Yeah, yeah. It's so fascinating. Um, okay, and that, so, like, back to, like, diversity. Yeah, uh-huh. like, I, I'm saying, yeah, I love, I'm, like, fascinated of, like, the young people now. No. I'm, like, so excited to see what they do in the future. Um, and um, I just think, we're finally at a time where we're just like, no more BS. Yeah. Time to be honest. Let's yeah. tell stories how they really are. It's because like we've seen so much like fakeness yeah. on TV, in the news. Right. Like it's like people are just like, I'm done with that. I want to just be myself. Yeah. Which is really fascinating. It's crazy. And I feel like the youth now are like starting protests. Like there's a lot of like marches that the youth are like with gun violence yeah. and all that. Like it's really like passion in my heart. Um, and I just see like a lot of youth stepping up. Mm-hmm. and really like making a change and I was like gosh I wasn't that fearless when I was in high school I was like still trying to figure out like my like what my face was doing with all the acne I had um, but like the youth now I feel like are really progressive and really trying to make a change which I'm like that's I love where it's headed towards 
Yeah, it's like I can't even tell you what I was doing when I was a kid. Like I was probably like, math homework. Like, like yeah. I mean, like, that's, I know I like cared about my grades. Yeah, that's and... all I ever did. So like, <laughs> I, but I think it's just because social media and people always give it a bad rap. But like, it connects you to the world. So yeah. as a young kid, you can like be tapped into a whole entire social movement. It's you know? crazy. Yeah. Mhm. But I don't know. I just I, I I'm well. I guess it's bad because. I, <laughs> <laughs> doing it wrong oh my god i need your help in the kitchen <laughs> i always kind of feel it before i go with the that, cheese that and, makes sense uh, okay so how how do you feel about social media do you feel like it's a time waster mm. or what's your spiel about it my thought is like you know so the, the internet really kind of started to become big when i was kind of in high school i would yeah. say at least when i kind of started tapping into it mm -hmm. and i always loved it because it was a great way to kind of connect with people around the world yeah. so for me it's always been a positive thing mm -hmm. but i can really see of course the negativity like i mean have you seen the comment sections in our videos right yeah um, <laughs> um and i also feel like i know I have a lot of friends so my, my good friend colin mm -hmm. like you know, a lot of her like self worth yeah. can be like damaged from social media. Yeah. She's like, I just need a break. Right. And I think is that especially happens with a lot of like women mm -hmm. too. Like I think, um, you know, because like there's so much like so much shit thrown mm -hmm. their way, and like it's just like all wrapped up in how much their value, which is so. I wrong. know it's so because so, it's like you can get tons of positive comments, yeah. and then you see that one negative one, yeah, and it just ruins your day. Yeah. And you're like, God, why? I don't yeah. even know this person, but yeah. it has such an impact. You know. I think it's because. Um, well, two things. So, one, first, I think with, it sucks for women, and I um, I don't know how it's gonna change, which is why it's so exciting that everyone's like mm -hmm. kind of being positive and like yeah. being like, I'm gonna love myself. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the negative thing. And so, I've never, I've never had that real self worth type of issue because I think it's when it comes to men, even like it's hard for, for some men, but I think mm -hmm. it's not close to how yeah. it's hard for women so like I, when i like go through scrolling things i see like a super hot guy mm -hmm. i'm not like why don't i look like that i'm more just like ooh, you know like, like yeah, yeah. you know so i don't have like that it doesn't like ruin my confidence so it's not like bad for my mental mm -hmm. health like, like it might be for some other people but i could see how it is it could be definitely be a, a time suck for me i definitely feel like i have to be like okay time to like put that away mm -hmm. wi-fi off i have to focus right um but overall like, i think it's such a great tool to be creative and um so i like social media um in general yeah um and then uh yeah the bad comment thing mm -hmm. oh my god like that that can be hard because like so for me for, um you know people it's like it's a combination of one or like three things usually in uh -huh. most buzzfeed videos right yes what it's is it that this like who's this gay fuck right like who's this gay person <laughs> oh they're so i know i'm so mad for yeah. you that can and i beat that, them up i want to find where they live right. oh. so they they make fun of being gay and like or like you know not manly whatever yeah. and then there's um like my weight and mm -hmm. which is like fluctuated a bit through buzzfeed mm -hmm. but whatever like i've had that worse before buzzfeed i used to weigh 310 pounds by the way what yeah Wow. Yeah. I that's, just that's found whole, that out. That's a whole wow. other story. Oh, that's another video we'll uh, tap into. Yeah. Um, but, the, and then the one that used to really get me, but now I'm like, but mm -hmm. I'm just being myself. I, people like hate my list, right? So uh -huh. I like have like a, yeah. you know, with like S's and yeah. THs and stuff. And um, I'm, that was like my, I'm always embarrassed of that. And so when uh -huh. people say it in videos, I'm always like, I'll, like oh, all these nice things. Yeah. And it's like, who is this lispy gay ass? Uh -huh. You know? And I'm just like, and it like hits me to my core and that's yeah. why I think it hurts so much because like yeah. the one negative one hurts because like for some reason they tie they go right into that thing that mm -hmm. you're embarrassed about yeah and you're like sh you're like everyone thinks like I fooled the world no one notices but people do and they yeah. and so like, it's the rude people who point it out yeah and you're like right into the heart you know um but yeah it's just being yeah. like you know my always note I tell myself is have you ever left like a mean comment on a video ever in your life? No. Right. Never have in my entire life. So yeah. can you imagine how sucky their life must be? That's true. It's a reflection to... of who they are. Yeah. 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 And like their own insecurities. Yeah. Like they, if they feel that much of a need, to it means say that, yeah. they have to like, they have an issue with themselves. And I think that's the best way to look at that because yeah. it's like, don't take it personal. Mm. Just like know that it's not you at all. Yeah. It's literally just what they're going through. Yeah. And um, how do you like with all those comments because it's it's hard to read that yeah especially when it's like the most liked one or something you're like god a lot of people think this about me yeah. and it's like the and you're like it's always a thing that they like know i'm insecure about yeah. and but how do you like get up the courage to like be on camera and be like you're mm. vulnerable and do what you do you know reading those things that's a good point um i guess i don't really know i in the beginning I just did you just do it and you were like just I'm just it. gonna not yeah and I was just like I have 
dreams and ambitions for what I want in life. So I'm just like, I'm just gonna do it. I yeah. don't care what they think. Yeah. And like, I, I kind of just have the mentality like, I don't have time for them. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm living my life. That's it's cool. sad they don't live their own life. And like, they, a lot of those people that are that negative, it's like they wish they had a yeah. life that they could be leading that they're proud of. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason why they want to tear people like us down is even if we're not perfect, even if we have like the small flaws that they're, you know, hating on. Like we're living what we want to do, and we're yeah. we're doing what we're passionate about, and people are jealous of that. Yeah, you know, and people wish they had that, and so it's like I, it's almost like to me now, I'm like it's encouragement that I'm being myself. Yeah, because you're not successful and you're not really making a change in the world unless mm-hmm. half the world hates you, yeah. right? <laughs> hey, I mean, yeah. So like, think about sure, it. Beyonce has haters. <laughs> think about it. Yeah, like pe- some people don't like Beyonce, yeah. and, and then like you know, President Obama, like all mm-hmm. like the big people in the world, like. Half the world absolutely loves you. Half mm. the world hates you. That's true. But that means that you have like made your mark. Yeah. So it's like I just try to think of it that way. It's like if they hate me, it's like good. You're part of like the whole group that does. But whatever, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, and I just yeah, it's just a part. That's what I try to think of it as. Like, yeah. how do you feel? Like when yeah. it happens to you, like is, do you have the same mentality or what do you think about? You know, it it gets to me for like a minute, yeah. and then I'm like. I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm going to allow myself maybe like five minutes to feel bad for myself yeah. with this comment and then be like, all right, like move on to the next because yeah. it's not worth like dwelling on negativity. Like mm. I said, I try to live my life with positive mindsets, surround myself with positive people. Yes. Um, so if there's going to be little trolls out there, then they can troll on out of my way because yeah. I'm not going to deal with that shit. <laughs> now, uh, who in your life has like really inspired you the most whether it be personal or in your career like when what have you learned from them um who who's inspired me the most you know honestly my grandma is like one of my biggest inspirations Mm -hmm. um she just has a good heart and she loved cooking and she just has like this passion for like giving to people Mm. and i think that's really hard to find in people that are Like, sometimes it's just, like, everybody wants to talk about themselves, especially in a city like L.A. Yeah. And, like, my grandma, to me, was, like, the most selfless person and so giving and pure. And I feel like I just really admire that from her. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um... What was was her name again? Was it Olinda? Olinda, but we would call her Uyi. So it was just, like, a name we would just always say. But, um, but yeah, it was Olinda. That was her, her official name. Very nice. Okay, so we asked like the five year question, but mm. like, what's like your life goal? Like, what, what, you know, when you are nearing the end of your life, like, what yeah. do you hope you have like accomplished? Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I really, really, really want to have like an album out, you know? Nice. Um, but I think what I would want to accomplish, like, when I die and that's on my gravestone, yeah. I'd want it to like, I want people to remember me as someone who really loved and like gave and yeah. inspired. Yeah. You know, like I I got inspired through media and so if I can inspire someone through my work, what I created, whether it's a song or like a music video or a YouTube video, yeah. I just want to like inspire people to like believe in themselves, you know? I love that. Yeah. Cuz like I think for, at least for me and I see this in you too mm-hmm. is like when you have so much passion, so much drive, like, you mm-hmm. want to create your own dreams, but then, like, once you get it, and when you're at, like, the top of the tower, it's, yeah. like, you want to give back, you know? Yeah. Like, like, and, like, you realize all the struggles you had growing up, yeah. and you want to be able to make it easier on someone else. Like, mm-hmm. And I think, like, I see that in you, and I think that's, like, really admirable. Yeah, no. I We all have, like, our insecurities, yeah. you know? And, like, I think that's really cool that we can do that, and we can, like, be vulnerable, because that's hard. It's so hard. So, yeah. And it's, like, but then... If, but if you aren't vulnerable, then, like, whatever you're creating mm-hmm. isn't, like, truly you. It's yeah. like you're creating, like, a fallacy, you know? Yeah, no. Yeah. So I think that's the best way to, to go about life is just living, like, your authentic self. I guess I've heard that so many times in the past two years, but that but wasn't a being, thing. But you know what? I've learned, like, especially the older I get, mm-hmm. cliches, Yeah. they are true. Like, they're annoying. Like, yeah, I've heard that a million times. But, yeah. like, like, the more I hear them and the yeah. older I get, I'm like, Fuck, that's like so true. Yeah. Like, they're that, cliches like, for a reason. Yeah, like, yeah. they're the reason. Like, it's crazy. Uh, okay, so um, we kind of are reaching the end here. No, um, does it have to end? <laughs> well, what's nice is like, what, you know, it's the food's never done, right? Yes. You're definitely coming back for more dinner parties. Oh I'm going to pack yeah. food up to bring home. There's so much food to bring home. 
every guest, right? Mm-hmm. They um, before they leave, they write a question for the next person. Yeah. So I'm gonna have you write a question for our next guest, who is my friend okay. Keanu. Have you met okay. Keanu? I think I have. Okay. Yes, yeah. very briefly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But Salorm mm-hmm. asked a question for you. Okay. okay? So Salorm said, um, "What quality about yourself will you want to carry with you into your old age?" Ooh, wow, she's getting deep. Yeah. Um, I really hope that I always stay positive that I can that I'm never jaded um mm-hmm. and I just I just want to be positive and inspire people amazing yes <laughs> um because also I feel like that's a really great question like I'm, I'm surprised you put that because yeah. I think that really then goes into like the true sense of like who you are right mm-hmm. so like if you want to be positive when you're mm-hmm. old in, in your old age it means that you care about being positive now yes which is evident right so that, like, <laughs> it's, that's so interesting yeah what that's a great a question good, that's a good question Go props to alarm. alarm yeah Snaps. um okay so then i'm gonna actually have you write a question for oh keanu all gosh, right there's so much pressure after salorm's question that's all right you know you have some time to think about it <laughs> let me think um okay let's see <laughs> Okay, great. Well, so we're going to keep it a secret until okay. next week. And the video will go up next Friday. And um, or this video will go up on Friday. And okay. then um, Keanu will be here for oh next my God. week. Yes. And then um, just like my last kind of way to finish it is if you could talk to like a younger mm-hmm. Sheila, mm-hmm. first, what would she think of the meal that I made for her? Okay. And then what would she, um, like, what would you say to her? Okay, well, first of all, I don't think I would be saying anything because I'd be so busy stuffing my face (laughs) with this food. It was so good. I, like, it's so good. And you know when, you know the saying of, like, you can tell when something's made with love? And I definitely, like, felt like you put your heart into this. And I feel like that's why you're such a good, you're so good at what you do is because I feel like everything you do, you always execute it with, like, putting love and, like, hard work. Thank you. And I and I could taste it in this dish. So um, Italian restaurants better watch out because <laughs> Matthew's in the house. I'm coming for your customers. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> and then what would you say to a younger you? Um, to a younger me, yeah. okay, like advice. Yeah. Okay. Advice. Okay, I would just say, stop yeah. being. I'd be like younger Sheila. Stop being so hard on yourself because it's all gonna work out. And you just got to keep pursuing what you love and then the world will like resonate with what you have to say. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like all of us kind of, even though we don't like to always say it, we kind of have like a destiny, right? As yeah. long as you are following like your omens, right? Yes. Following your, your passions and you Follow just work your hard, <laughs> it happens. Yes. Great. I'm excited. Any, anything else you want to say to like people watching if they made it this long throughout the entire I interview? I know. <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, hearing us eat and make <laughs> ASMR yeah. sounds. Um, but yeah, no, thanks for watching. And honestly, like, I encourage everyone to do something that inspires them and like to just share it on the world. And I feel like you're doing it. Yeah. And you're making shit happen. Yeah. And I think that people should just like do what they love and make shit happen. Yes. Yeah. So You're here to hear. Make that <laughs> shit happen. Go out. Sheila told you so. Sheila says. Sheila says. Yeah. So Z. wait, on the main slide, wait. So Instagram, Sheila yes. says. Um, any other thing you want to promote? Um, oh, well, I might be uh, launching my YouTube. I'm going to be launching my there YouTube channel. There we go. And um, hopefully you can tune into my adventures. Matthew will be in it as well. And um, just, you know, hopefully you can learn a little thing or two about life. Yay. Yay. Well, thank you. This was amazing. Thanks for coming. Give no, me a thank hug. you so much. This is so sweet. Yes. This is so cool. Thanks for doing this. I, re- I really appreciate it. And, like, I feel honored to be a guest here. 